The commutator subgroup of a group is a very important subgroup that is in general quite difficult to compute. So in this video I want to give you a method to compute commutator subgroups that is in practice really helpful. Let G be a group, let X and Y be elements of the group. This element is what we call a commutator, the commutator of X and Y, and the commutator subgroup is the subgroup generated by all commutators. It's not the set of commutators, it's the subgroup generated by all commutators. So how do we compute this commutator subgroup? In general you have to start by computing lots of commutators and see what group do they generate. But that can be very time consuming and quite difficult in general. So how do we actually do it? We use the following fact. Suppose that f is a homomorphism from g to another group a such that a is an abelian group. Then, and you should prove this, the commutator subgroup is a subgroup of the kernel of this homomorphism. Now moreover, if a is a large or relatively large abelian group and f is surjective, then the larger a is, the more chances you have that the commutator subgroup is actually identical, is equal to the kernel of that homomorphism. And that is because the quotient of g by the commutator subgroup is the largest abelian quotient of g. Let me start with an easy example. Let's try to compute the commutator subgroup of S3, the permutation group on three letters. What is this subgroup? Well, we do have a homomorphism from S3, from any Sn, in fact, given by the sign of the permutations uh, that goes to plus or minus one, and that is a surjective homomorphism. And the kernel of this homomorphism is A3, the alternating group in three letters, which is actually, in this case, generated by this single element. That shows that the commutator subgroup is contained in A3. Now, is it equal to A3? Well, now I can compute some commutators just to see how large is it inside A3. So let's compute one commutator. For example, the commutator of 1, 2 on 1, 3 is actually 1, 2, 3. So that means that 1, 2, 3 is a commutator and therefore it is contained in the commutator subgroup. And so the subgroup generated by that one element is also contained in the commutator subgroup. But this is A3. So what we've proved is that the commutator subgroup is actually all of A3. Now let's compute the commutator subgroup of the affine group of the real line, that is the group of matrices A, B, 0, 1 with A non-0 and B any real number. There is a homomorphism from the affine group to the non-zero reals given simply by the determinant of that matrix, A, B, 0, 1 goes to A, and therefore the commutator subgroup has to be contained in the kernel of this map. The kernel of this map is clearly when A is 1, so this is the kernel. And now the question is, is the commutator all of this? Now this map is actually surjective, so R star is actually a rather large abelian quotient of the affine group, so we might be lucky in that this is in fact the entire commutator. So to check that this is the entire commutator, I need to try to build this matrix as a commutator element. And then you compute uh, some commutators in terms of some like generic elements just to see what combination of elements would actually give you this matrix. And uh, you can figure out that if A is non-zero and not one, then if B is arbitrary, it turns out that the commutator element of these two matrices is precisely this matrix. So that means that this uh, group, which is the kernel, is actually contained in the commutator subgroup. But we had proved the reverse inclusion, and therefore we have proved that the commutator subgroup is in fact this group.